I had to sit in a trash can wrapped up in a black garbage bag and have water poured on my head for five hours. The picture's amazing. My name is Jan Devilnev. I'm 74 years old. I started modeling when I was 22. So I've been modeling for over 50 years. Hi, I'm Zofia Tasso. I'm 21 and I've been modeling for about a year. How did you start out with modeling? I didn't intend on actually doing modeling. I guess it sort of stemmed from my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I think I just started to blossom as a person in terms of my confidence and the pictures that I would take. I grew up quite insecure, like I was always at the back. And mm -hmm. now to be in a completely different space, it's just, it's still sort of sinking in. Like every shoot that I go on is still very new to me. I'm enjoying it though, but it was just very unexpected. But the industry has changed so much from when I first started and having um, your portfolio, whereas now you can instantly get started. Yeah. Um, on Instagram, you can have your picture out there, people can see it. With the rise of social media and people like finding careers through Instagram, do you think there are sort of like any negatives to that? I think it's just different, it's very different. One of my daughters started me out a couple of years ago and I was probably putting family, friends, the dog, and then instantly got into the modeling bit more animation. So he said, put more model pictures, old and new. People like to see the old pictures too. So literally now it is just a model book for me. It's a working portfolio. And I, I know I always felt very, um, not self-conscious, but not wanting to put myself out as a brand. Now, of course, you have to be a brand. That's the whole point, or kind of a person that people recognize, which is hard sometimes. People make comments and suggestions, yeah, yeah, and yeah. not everyone likes everything. But I think it's brilliant that girls like yourself are having a voice and I think it's nice that people have the opportunity to see things on someone that they can relate to. Yeah, yeah, and I think Maybe it's also you. like um, a big help to younger girls and boys to see, you know, someone like them on billboards or magazines, you know, yeah. I think it's just sort of changing the norm slowly but surely. I do think it'd be fun if they did include more of us that aren't just white girls age 20, size zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you'll probably sell more clothes than I will or than, than a 20-year-old because I think more and more people yeah. want to be able to be themselves and exactly. you know, put on something that feels fun and yeah. cover a vogue. <laughs> Hopefully one day. <laughs> do you see any negatives with social media? I do. I think there's always been an ideal look associated mm -hmm. with social media and that's been so damaging especially to people who have grown up with social media you know that I think right. a certain ideal then becomes embedded yeah no I agree and also the things like I know sometimes the photographs are jiggled about or for a cover of Vogue they might take 400 pictures or 500 pictures or yeah. uh, so it's not just like a snapshot I think sometimes it can look like everyone else's life is perfect yeah and exactly that I think could be a problem like you have to realize that's not the case. But then again, I think with all this conversation around social media and around yeah. mental health and around all of that, I think we are becoming more aware of these issues. It's important that we sort of... Keep it in context. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But then I think it also has a positive because you have these little communities mm -hmm. who are growing from the ground up that teach you to love yourself. When I first started to use Instagram, um, I saw women like me like wear really cool clothes mm -hmm. um, and they were just being themselves and I was like wow like I can actually be like that one day and without women like that I like wouldn't even be sitting you in You didn't show people in magazines or in newspapers? I didn't, no, 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 it was all from Instagram, it was all from social media. Have you had any issues around the Me Too movement as far as your career? At first because I was quite young. I was just sort of oblivious and it, it's really weird because the whole hierarchy thing comes into play and you don't know when you should speak out or if this is okay or if it's wrong. And now I look back and I just realise, okay, you know, that, that wasn't cool, that was highly mm -hmm. inappropriate. I remember one of the first um, test jobs I did in New York, a photographer had said to me, could I take my blouse off because he was shooting from here and he didn't want the blouse to show. So I thought, okay. I was a bit shy. In those days I was wearing a bra. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, could you take your bra off? And I felt really anxious, but I did it because this is a person who was supposed to be professional asked me to do something. And the picture was fine. It was cut from here. Yeah. And he never got any closer, you know, than 15 feet away. But 
I was very anxious in the picture. Several people had said I looked quite sexy. I was just terrified. I never told my agent until probably 20 years later, I was visiting with her and saying, oh, by the way, this picture, this is what this guy did and said. And this is, you know, way before the Me Too slogan. I, I, I should have said, why is this necessary? Give me a scarf or something. Yeah. Um, but he made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And I shouldn't have, I was probably 22 years old. I was old wow. enough. So a young girl would have a hard problem. And I was old enough to say no. So maybe my only regret would have been maybe speaking up more to, with my agent about yeah. things, personal things. But at the time you didn't, you didn't do that and no one talked about these issues. We're a lot more vocal now, I guess. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that there's always been a certain ideal pushed in the modelling world and the fashion world. How do you maintain your confidence? It's tough to keep your sanity and yeah. sense of well-being yeah. in an industry which is all about superficial things, so much about superficial things. I always felt conflicted about the idea of making a living in how you look. Yeah. I was uneasy about that all the time. And I, I read some psychology books, one by a man called Artie Lang, and I was able to see him in therapy. But that helped me a lot to feel that I could be myself and not to worry about what other people thought. But I think that it could be hard. It could be hard to, um, especially with Instagram and all the images one sees. The thing that sort of kept me going is seeing my progress and seeing how right. far I've come as a person, like how I've grown into myself and like I'm understanding myself more. And yeah. I think that's the thing that, you know, that makes exactly. me thrive. And yeah. it's just so freeing when you're comfortable right. with yourself. And you want to be able to be yourself. That's for me the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. I, and that's even going back to plastic surgery. And I've seen some people where it seems to work all right, but I wouldn't want to not be myself. But to change the way I look, you know, yeah. just would undermine me. So I guess yeah. part of me just is, is carrying on trying to be the best person I can be and the best version of myself I can be. It's just learning things that make me yeah, feel a better exactly. person. And knowing that you are helping other people who might relate to you as well, that's also... Yeah, older ladies and will say to me they enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I accept notes that pictures of my Instagram that seem to get the most response are the ones where I look my age now maybe with not much makeup on yeah. and that's okay because yeah. I'm not trying to do anything special, just exactly. be myself. <laughs>